to edit your website settings, you can go here to settings and website settings. Now let's look at the documentation on what it says about website settings. The website settings give you the possibility to configure website specific settings, which you can access in every controller and view. For example, recapture public and private keys, locale settings, Google Maps API key, defaults, and etc. And the demo version, they've actually added two, two objects, the default text class and the fallback filter definition. Also possible use cases here uh, in the website settings, you can actually set, let's say, the, the logo because in the types which we have the asset, which means if we define the type of asset and set the key to let's say site logo, we could take asset and just drag and drop it here. For now, I'm going to pick the text, click on text and say, let's call it test. When we add it, we have an option of adding a, a language specific text. Uh, we're not going to pick that and the value of it is going to be testing website settings. Save it. There we go. And let's go back to the documentation. Let's see how we can access it. Uh, this is an example if you're trying to access it within a controller. Right now we're going to put it directly into the site or should I say uh, the Twig template. So let's go back to our code. We have our test uh, Twig template and here on the top I'm just going to add an HR to divide this and we would access it like so. The only difference that we have here is you can see that it says Google Maps key. However, here we put in the key as test. So we would access it by test. This is going to be your fallback in case the value is empty. We're just going to call it not, uh, empty. If we go to the site and refresh it on the top, we can see testing website settings. This is very, very useful, but it's also uh, specific on the needs that you have. It's a great thing to have when, for example, that they actually put, if you have your recapture or Google Maps, you can just put your API keys here and it's going to be accessible anywhere that you need it and you don't have to go directly in the code to change it. Hope the video helped you. And if you want to learn more about PIMCore, you can check out my Udemy course called Learning PIMCore from Zero to Hero, where I will show you all of the steps from creating a project, buying and setting up a server, as well as deploying your project. Hope to see you there.